a large number of people, both children and adults, experience medical intervention and care at Triple M. They walk in through the doors of Triple M as patients and walk out with a new lease on life. The Madras Medical Mission Hospital, since 1987, has been synonymous with excellence in patient care and quality medical treatment at an affordable cost. And it continues to draw a large number of patients from various stratas of the society. The Institute of Cardiovascular Diseases, ICVD, at Triple M, has many firsts to its credit, including the first adult and pediatric heart transplantation in the private sector, percutaneous pulmonary valve implantation, first bilateral lung transplantation, first ROS procedures, first Batista procedure, and so on. The Institute is made up of several departments, including departments for adult and pediatric cardiology and surgery, and a department for cardiac rehabilitation. It is also home to some of the finest cardiac specialists in India. The catheterization lab at the Cardiovascular Diseases Department is a state-of-the-art facility that brings in a multidisciplinary team of doctors. It is here that diagnostic angiographic procedures and therapeutic interventional procedures are performed. With every surgery performed, with every patient treated, the Cardiovascular Diseases Department at Triple M reinforces its commitment to its missionary values. Every patient that comes in for treatment at the department, from a day-old baby to a 90-year-old, is an opportunity to further the Madras Medical Mission's goal of reaching out to the unreached. Hello, uh, Dr. Uh, Krishnamurthy, can you hear me? Yes, good morning, Dr. Shiva. Good morning. I will, uh, so I, I will uh, request one of my colleague, uh, Dr. Amal, to present the case. PowerPoint, please. A patient is a 76-year-old doctor. He is a known case of ischemic heart disease since past 35 years, diabetic since one year. He is a non-smoker, non-alcoholic. In 1990, he was admitted with ischemic heart disease and syncope. VT was identified and he was disinverted. In 1995, there was history of major event with palpitation, syncope and was again diagnosed with uh, ventricular tachycardia and was treated with amiodarone. In June 2000, he was diagnosed with coronary artery disease with six sinus syndrome. Coronary angiogram showed left main triple vessel disease for which he underwent uh, CABG with three grafts. He was also resuscitated uh, because of cardiac arrest. In Jan 2005, he was again admitted with uh, ventricular tachycardia and again DC verted. Echo showed severe LV dysfunction. Coronary angiogram was done which showed patent graft. There was inducible VT of at least two morphologies. Uh, persistent AF was seen on electrophysiologic study uh, done in the same uh, admission. Hence, he underwent a dual chamber AICD implantation. In 2011, he underwent pulse generator replacement. Uh, in 2015, there was, an in, there was an appropriate high energy shock for VT. Hence, he was started on Cordron. His uh, persistent warfarin treatment uh, since past 10 years. He was diagnosed with acid peptide disease with a history of melina. He has lebel INR. Presently, in persistent atrial fibrillation on tablet beta log, Cordron, Clopidogrel and warfarin. Warfarin he's been taking since past 11 years. He's also on high dose diuretics for congestive heart failure. On examination, he is conscious oriented, weighing around 70.4 kg, pulse rate of 90 per minute. Uh, JVP was not elevated. Uh, cardiovascular examination was normal. ECG showed uh, atrial fibrillation with paced ventricular rhythm. X-ray showed cardiomegaly and leaves were seen in RA, RV and pacing generator was also seen. Eco, uh, on echocardiography, LA, we did an LA appendage assessment which showed landing zone of 21 millimeter, mouth of the appendage was 25 millimeter and a depth of 16 millimeter. There was no LA appendage or uh, RA appendage clot. Moderate MR was seen with an MR contractor of 4 into 5 millimeter. Moderate LV dysfunction was present with EF of only 30 percent. Patient in atrial fibrillation with controlled ventricular rate. This is, this is the uh, transesophageal echo showing contrast, uh, echo, uh, spontaneous contrast in uh, left atrial appendage. This is 3D and first view of left atrial appendage showing no thrombus. This is the measurement of our uh, LA, uh, LA appendage. Uh, 
the pulse wave Doppler in the LA appendix showed only uh, D waves, which are the show of the astrolytic dysfunction. There was a moderate MR with a vena contract of uh, 4 millimeter. The final diagnosis, coronary artery disease with old inferior wall MI, post uh, CABG with 3 grafts in 2000, documented BT, post AICD implantation with pulse generator replacement in 2011. He is in persistent AF on warfarin 2 mg since past 11 years. He is known diabetic since one year. There is no LA or RA appendage thrombus. There is moderate MR with moderate LV systolic dysfunction. So our plan is for LA appendage device closure, but why? And what is Chadwas and Hasbrid score? So in non-rheumatic atrial fibrillation uh, uh, patients, there is a chance of 12.6% uh, to develop thrombus in LA. 90% of these thrombus are found in uh, left atrial appendage. So the component of Chadwax score are uh, uh, congestive heart failure, hypertension, old age of more than 75 years, diabetic patient, history of stroke, vascular disease, elderly patient with an age of 65 to 74 years, and female patient. It has better validation than uh, Chad S2 score. So in our patient, our patient had uh, congestive heart failure, hypertension, age of more than 75, diabetes mellitus, and vascular disease. So score in our patient was 6. And with a score of uh, 6, the annual stro uh, stroke risk, risk is around 9.8 percent. Has blood score, uh, it assesses the risk of bleeding. In our patient, uh, we, uh, uh, hypertension is present. There is a history of bleeding, labile INR, and elderly, elderly age of 76 years. So our uh, has blood score was 4, with an annual bleeding risk of 8.7 percent. So, in, uh, so to conclude, in our patient, CHADVAS score is 6, with the risk of stroke every year is 9.8%. So measures should be taken to, for prevention of stroke. So if we give warfarin, risk of bleeding is 8.7% uh, per year. So there is justification for avoiding warfarin and closure of left atrial appendage. Thank you. So I, I think our uh, Dr. Amal gave a very detailed presentation of the justification for the procedure, the indication of the procedure. So now I will request my colleague Dr. Srija to show you the anatomy of the left atrial appendage. First picture. Yeah, go, go to Echo Big. Hello. Can you see the Echo pictures? Oh yes, we can see the echo pictures, Shiva. I am Shiva here. Hi, how are you? I am fine. How are you, Shiva? You have pre presented a good case with a well justification for an appendix closure. Like surgeons doing appendicectomy, now we have a vestigial organ to act on using a device. Okay, go <laughs> that place. Yeah, Dr. Srija, my colleague, is now on the echo. Srija, go ahead. So this is uh, already you have seen some images of the TE. So this is a four chamber view which shows the LV dysfunction and the LA dilatation. That is the LA appendage which is devoid of any clot. And in orthogonal views we have measured the mouth and the measurement varies from 23 to 27 millimeter. This is around 28. This is a 3D zoom image showing the mouth of the LA appendage. It's measuring around 22 in this view. Thank you. So, that was so based on uh, the uh, based on the thoras, the transesophageal two-dimensional echocardiographic pictures. We have a, a maximum dimension of the landing zone around 28. So now we are uh, we are we, we we will do the septal puncture. We will go make the angiographic measurements. Marker pigtail ready. So now I I am I'm going to use the echo navigation. Go echo navigation big. So what you are seeing on the screen is the. Enable the mouse. Yeah. So this is our the zero degree plane. The place where we have to puncture the atrial septum 
will be on the posterior and the inferior portion. Enable the explain, Srija. Yeah, explain. Go towards, little bit towards the in. Yeah, that's fine. So, you see now Dr. Srija is cutting the atrial septum. So, somewhere here we need to puncture. So, now I am adding the annotation. You keep watching the screen. Now, I am taking... not ellipse, I want a marker. So, I am adding a marker here, but there it is going very superior. So, now what, what I will do is, Srija, you need to push the probe a little bit inside. So, I will delete this marker. So, I need to be on the most inferior portion and so Srija will push the probe a little bit inside and hold the probe in the same position so that the probe does not keep moving out. Yeah, right now the probe will be kept still and I am adding a marker here and the next step is integrating it with the fluoro. So, you will see that there is a green color that is coming on here. So, that means it is integrated and now on the fluoroscopic screen you will find that this is the marker. So, now we go and accept that annotation. So, this is the place where we are roughly going to puncture. You can also appreciate on the fluoroscopic screen that there is a defibrillator wire, there is an atrial pacing wire, the patient is pacemaker dependent. So, right now, I am going to start with the puncture. So, I have uh, watched the fluoroscopic screen. I have a pigtail catheter that is in the aorta. Now, I am coming down with my transeptal sheath. And when I am coming down, I am targeting that yellow marker. So, can you see the pictures? Yeah, yeah, we can clearly see it. We can see the brilliant, uh, what is it called, practical way of keeping the mouse sterile using that uh, surgeon's plastic cover. Actually, surgeons choose the epicardial echo using the echo transducer inside that cover. Very brilliant, Shiva. Go ahead. Thank you. So, right now we are planning to indent the septum. Srija will now rotate the probe and now show us where we are indenting. Srija, you can see the atrial septum being indented and the moment it is indented, she is going to move the explain image on to the place of the indent. The explain will move, now move on to the plane where we are indenting. So, I will move it a little bit down. So now I have entered into the left atrium based on that indentation. Now I will make a check injection with my, to make you understand it better, I am going to make the fluoroscopy bigger. So I am going to enable the mouse. So now you can appreciate. I will, I will take away the fluor. So, right now you see that, see that we are in the left atrium and now I will give the simultaneous echo position. Srija, now go, go to, go to LAO here. Go to LAO. Yes, don't know mags and all. Reduce. So now we are inside the left atrium now. And so Srija push the probe down. Yeah, just not reaching. Show the echo. The take off the zero, the take off the explain.
So I'm advancing my needle. Come to AP. Sita, can you see the contrast in the left atrium? Yeah, Show yeah, the I contrast the in the left atrium. I will, I will make the... Make the echo screen bigger. You see that my contrast that I am injecting in the left atrium. So now I will again make the fluoroscopy bigger. Go off mag. Mouse what? Dr. Si yes. Dr. Sivakumar. What, yeah. is the, what is the equipment which you are using? The equipment for echocardiography. Echocardiography is Philips CX50 with X72T transesophageal probe, which is the X matrix transesophageal probe. Now, what are the the mission that we are having is. The, uh, the cath lab equipment is Philips. It is uh, integrated, the software is integrated so that we are fusing the echo over the fluoroscopy. So right now what I am doing is, I am advancing my sheath. Can you see the fluoroscopy also? Yeah, yeah we can see both. Okay, thank you. And we so, can see your excellent uh, hand-eye uh, coordination. So, thank you, sir. Sir, now I am going to advance by pigtail catheter into the left atrium. Now, in the meantime, let me also tell some hemodynamics of the patient. You will now notice the aortic pressure there about 160 over 60 the right uh, the right we did a right heart hemodynamics first ra mean pressure was 13 millimeters of mercury the patient was on thrice a day diuretics the pulmonary artery pressure systolic was 45 systolic and mean of 35 so now we have the left atrial pressure i will give you the left atrial pressure And with lot of people sitting there who are uh, coronary practitioners, they will be curious to know what is the status of all the grafts. So let me also show you the grafts. Go to the first angiogram. It's not common for all our pediatric department to do meticulous graft angiograms, but in this patient I decided to do because that is of importance. This is the first right coronary graft which is patent. It is filling uh, the PDA and uh, next picture. Second image. So this is the OM Boslore. This is the OM graft. Again that is patent. Third this is the internal mammary graft flowing reasonably well. So, the surgeon had done two venous grafts and one arterial graft and all the three are flowing well. Now on uh, hemodynamic monitor what you are seeing is the left atrial mean pressure of 22 millimeters of mercury with prominent V waves. There are no A waves as the patient is in atrial fibrillation. We can understand the significance of the heart failure. So any, any questions still now sir, I am advancing my pigtail catheter into the left atrial appendage. From your uh, pre-operative images, what is the type of the left atrial appendage? Uh, it it looks like an usual type of appendage of the conical shape Chicken without any accessory lobes. 
okay, accessory lobes and uh, so it, it looked like, uh, actually Dr. Srija is right now showing you the appendage. Srija, show. How did you calibrate the size of the device which you are going to do? I am yet to calibrate, sir. I am actually going to measure now. We are, we are putting in a marker pigtail catheter. The <coughs> echocardiography alone is not, that is the appendage. So I am advancing my pigtail into the appendage. So we can appreciate on the uh, echocardiography. Enable the mouse. See, this is the this is the explain image. This is the left atrial appendage, and this is in its orthogonal projection. The place where the circumflex artery is seen here is the landing zone, and this is the mouth. So we got the mouth of around 30 millimeters and the landing zone is somewhere around 27 to 28 we are going to make an angiogram right now so now what i will do is i will clear that transeptal marker so can, you can also appreciate make it larger no no not that okay i will i will go from here Uh, we can we can see now this is the the catheter is in the left atrial go to go to right it uh, right RAO view caudal 30 Maruti I want ultrasound overlay So we can appreciate now the fluoroscopic fusion over the echocardiography. Can you see that? Yes. Should I get the L appendage slightly better? Open it out. Angiography ready? So we are making a pressure angiography. Give about 15 ml at 15 rate. Since there is a lot of silence from the auditorium, I wonder whether my audio or the video is all reaching there. Um, this is Dr. Janardhan. Can you hear, hear me, Dr. Sivaguma? Hi. Hi, Dr. Janardhan, how are you? Hey, doing great. Uh, very nice images so far. So, quick question, do you use other 3D modalities while you are on the echo navigation or you just stay with the echo navigation? Do you do live 3D or 3D zoom other modalities since it's an echo conference? Yeah, sure. Actually, we, we, in fact, Dr. Srija, Srija, can you show the, on echo the 3D zoom acquirements that you made? Go to the yeah. sixth picture. Yeah, I can. The stored image. Actually, the... Uh, yeah, she, right now she is going live. Yeah, the question I have is during this uh, live you, processing, do you switch to other modes and uh, not the not the previously processed images? Do you go to the other modes or you stay with echo navigation? Do you like uh, to no, actually we today we did that. I, I don't go for a measurements on the 3D echocardiography. Very often what I find is on 3D echocardiography, since we are increasing the gain on the echocardiography, the sizes are smaller. So I don't, I don't go by the 3D echocardiographic measurements. The 2D echocardiographic measurements, I got a maximum dimension of 27 millimeter. I'm going to confirm it on the echocardiography, on, uh, on the angiography now. And then we are going to take a decision. And, and uh, when you do the measurements, they are different when you do the 130 degrees and on the 90 degrees on the 2D measurements. So you're going by the long axis, which is the la you know, largest measure. And we say the measure, are you measuring the landing zone or the ostia? Landing zone, landing zone. What, what I had been talking about is the landing zone. Dr. Shiva, if there is discrepancy... Opposite to the circumflex artery. Shiva, if there is discrepancy between so echo... 
Yeah, if there is a discrepancy between it, echo and echo true, and very we, often the... You the, take the largest? We do... No, we, yeah, that is one. We take the largest and we often trust more on fluoroscopy. One more question. Does because the current technology... Is, yep. Does the current technology allow 3D image overlay on this echo now or only 2D? Yes, yes, it is possible. 3D echo overlay. Srija, just go on to live 3D there. Yeah. Now, this is the 3D overlay. Very often we use this for paravalvar leaks. In LA appendage closure, it is not going to be of significant use. The color, uh, where to change it? So now you see that now I am I am actually slicing it. Co-cranial. We can we can by the changing the fluoroscopy position we can we can we can open up. Can you see that LA appendage getting opened up here? Yeah. Actually, I am I am moving the fluoroscopic screen. I am not uh, moving the echocardiography. Dr. Srija is fixed on the echocardiography. I am just moving the these are the marker pigtail, the artifacts of the marker pigtail. Each one is the marker and this is the left atrial appendage. So let me go ahead and do the angiography first. Come to Areva Cardal. So now I will go for fluoroscopy. Make the simple fluoroscopy bigger. Yeah. And you ready? 15 at 15. Yeah. Shoot. So this is the RAO caudal projection. Shiva, do, do you use the same PSI as we do for LV angio? PSI. Uh, uh, PSI. PSI in this position was 1000. 1000, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah. So we are now going for RAO cranial view. Second injection, ready? Quickly, somebody has to go and measure. So, the measurement is now going to be made. We can appreciate that this left atrial appendage does not have too much of uh, up uh, accessory lobes. And by uh, angiograph angiographically, I think the size is becoming smaller. Srija, once again make echo measurements. I will, I will go make the echo bigger. Enable the mouse. So we are taking some time to make the fluoroscopic measurements. And in the meantime, I want the J wire. And uh, delivery system. 13 French Amplazer delivery system. Uh, so Dr. Shiva, I have a quick question for you. Um, do these patients typically get a CT yeah. scan uh, to look at the measure of the appendage on a CT or you just go by echo and fluoro? We have, yeah, we have not, uh, we have not employed uh, fluoroscope, I mean CT scanning so far. Uh, I am aware about a lot of centers in US uh, going with uh, yeah, CT measurements and there are, there are centers in New York which even employ CT navigation and CT fusion. Indian economy probably does not permit uh, such a high-end uh, equipments for left atrial appendage device closures. Dr. Janardhan, what is your view about uh, using uh, fluoros, I mean uh, using CT uh, as a routine? Yeah, we, we use CT, I'm, you know, I'm, I, I do the CTs myself, so I'm at the scanner, these are dedicated protocols, these are not the regular chest CTs, uh, these are timed off the left atrium 
uh, with a 100 cc contrast and then there is a uh, you wait for about 30 seconds and there is a second injection. So these are not routine uh, CTs you don't just get it done with a simple protocol. So um, you have to supervise these studies. So basically it's a double injection 100 cc of contrast uh, timed off the left atrial appendage then you wait for about 30 seconds then you give a second bolus and make sure that the left atrial appendage is completely opacified and then we get um, we do multiplanar reconstruction and we can actually measure the ostium and also cl clearly see the circumflex artery and we can measure the landing zone. And the other advantage of CT is you can see multi-lobed um, appendages, you know, if the, the appendage is too big, too small. So there are a lot of ben benefits of CT. It um, doesn't matter if the patient is in atrial fibrillation. So unlike a coronary study, you do not need to uh, need a regular um, heart rate. With coronaries, you need a heart rate uh, regulation with beta blockers. Um, and a sinus rhythm. Yeah, and and uh, is it the routine practice in all the American centers? That that I'm not sure. Go we only on a CT or no? This is uh, for these kind of procedures. Uh, for routine um, appendage uh, thrombi, we just go by regular TEE. But for uh, we have we have, we used to be a center for lariat. Uh, and so we have a protocol for lariat, for watchmen also we have a specific protocol. So CTs are routinely done for these uh, procedures as part of, uh, part of the pre-procedural workup. But for regular uh, thrombi assessment, we do not do routine CTs. Uh, Dr. Janathan, uh, this is Dr. Madhavan. Uh, I'm here in the front row. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, you, have you compared CT sizing with the echo and uh, uh, LA angiogram? CT no. sizing of LA appendage versus echo finding and LA angiogram. No, I Any have not done that personally. We are not actually a watchman site yet. We were doing it for lariat. For lariat, you know, we don't re really need to do the landing zone measurement. But I have not done it, but I'm pretty sure if, if a CT is done correctly, it all depends on the same thing like I said yesterday. It doesn't matter which technique you use as long as it's done correctly. Um, you know, uh, you can get decent measurements. Uh, with echo, it has got some issues with the measurement, uh, with the gain setting like that was discussed. If you have too much gain, you may undersize it. If you do too little gain, so there is some sub subjectivity. With CT, I don't have the subjectivity. Once the appendage is opacified fully, it doesn't matter. If five people measure it, it will all come up the same. But it has to be done correctly. Okay, thank you. So now uh, I, uh, I, took, I took a couple of minutes to go and make some measurements. You would have seen the measurements now. It is around 20, 21 to 22. Uh, Shiva Kumar, can you show the echo measurements? So right now... Uh, echo measurements. Yeah. yeah. I'll show you, sir. Now I have to change the mouse yeah, settings the there. Can you show the echo live? What are the landmarks which you take for measurements? The circumflex artery level for the landing zone. I want all the delivery systems ready. So, Dr. Strija's measurement on echocardiography and the fluoroscopic measurement are now roughly matching. So we are having uh, possibly around 22 at the landing zone. So now let me first advance the sheath inside. Can you give me a 14, 16 dilator at the groin? Still rely more on the fluoro than the echo now. Yeah, yeah, Krishnamurti, no? Uh. Krishnamurti, yeah, actually, see, any interventionist believes more on uh, fluoroscopy than echocardiography. I'm sure you will agree. No, I don't agree. 
the, after after you have mastered the technique of echocardiography then it is fine no we, now we are doing in an evolving procedure okay now i have to ask you do you do this echo now only in complex procedures or do you employ this in simple procedures also no only in complex you have to intubate the patient first of all so we don't intubate uh, many of our patients dr shivakumar i need to remind you this is an echo conference so you know we are the majority here yeah but uh, but dr manoj the uh, the practical uh, thing is whenever it is uh, complex intervention all interventionists rely more on fluoroscopy that's a, that's a fact we have to accept it show the light here I mean, I can comment that uh, the you know the practice in the U.S. is slightly different. Um, I mean, I agree with you. Uh, you know, I work with uh, very aggressive interventionists who go by fluoro primarily. The benefit of uh, the Indian uh, system is uh, the interventionists know pretty good echo, so that's helpful. Um, unlike the U.S. so i'm i'm having some difficulty in the groin we will remember that this patient had multiple electrophysiological studies in the past multiple angiographies in the past and so the groin is indurated so right now i'm getting that large delivery system which is 13 french amplazer left atrial appendage delivery system come to the ap uh, ap view and show the groin show below no. show show below show below see this sort of uh, the bends that are here you you have to go only by fluoroscopy now uh it's not uh, it's not working give the 10 french uh, life tech delivery system there was a show show above uh, and ensure that we are in the left atrial appendage show echocardiography we are in the left appendage yeah 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 hold it do you need to so change the wire changing my delivery system to do you need to change the wire we have yeah. the j floor of floor we are supposed to have the la append the j wire within the la appendage actually push it little bit inside yes enough enough yeah, yeah, leave it leave it leave it So right now I am changing the delivery system. The earlier one was the dedicated LA appendage delivery. Yeah, this is also a dedicated LA appendage delivery system of the Life Tech. Okay. The LA appendage delivery device of the Life Tech is called Lambre system. and the device of uh, amp tenjud is called uh, acp amplazer cardiac plug But now, now are, it is changed now you are using into, a 10 french uh, amulet sheet isn't it sure. now, now you are using a 10 french sheet yeah in li in li yeah li li lifetech is a smaller delivery no, system no. i told about the groin uh, irregularities 
because of multiple previous cardiac catheterizations that has been done, Can you go live on the echo? So now I am taking my delivery system inside the left atrial appendage. Go to RAV view. So now I am slowly taking out my dilator. Dr. Srija, just rotate and, and show the whole delivery system. Yeah. You put your finger here. There is a free backflow. So I am taking out the guide wire. We are going to check the position within the left atrial appendage. Are you seeing the fluoroscopy also on the corner? Yes. Yes. Okay, so we can see the sheath is now inside the left atrial appendage. Dr. Srija is showing the on fast view. So now that we have made a measurement of around 22 millimeter. Our intention will be initially to start off with a. 26 device. Yeah, open it. Show the camera. Give, give this. Yeah, show the box there. So the, that is the device. Focus on the device. There is a delivery system for it, connector for it. There are two figures, 26 and 32 in that uh, marking. So there is a, there is a... No, no, this is not longer. Okay, so now what we are doing is, uh, we are going to show the device to you, come close up on the... Who is, who is handling this camera? So while you're opening that, let me ask you a question. Can you hear me? You can focus. Dr. Shivakumar. Oh, yeah. yeah. So you said that the, the landing zone is 21, maybe 22 millimeter. How did you choose the 26 just for the audience? Normally, normally it is chosen about three to four millimeter larger. All these nitinol occluders, most of the atrial uh, devices go on the same principle around 3 to 4 overlap and and how important so now is now can you see the device uh, how important is, how important is the depth of the appendage you know that is also a measure that we do yeah the depth of the measurement in this patient was 16 now let me let me explain to you what is the meaning of the depth see we, we have the device which has got a disc here and a lobe here. This is the lobe and this is the disc. So the disc has got 26 millimeter and it is covered by PTFE so that it doesn't poke into the walls of the left atrial appendage. The disc has got 30 millimeter and the screw unlike in ACP is here recessed. Recessed means it has gone inside. I don't know where. 
now now you see that picture are are you seeing the picture yeah yeah we are seeing it clearly okay so so this is recessed so now what i'm going to load it inside that is only difference from acp that recession plenty of this differences no like uh, see there is no ptfe cover and uh, the the device uh, it is actually like a like a box there in acp here i will show you when i am loading it it's a totally different design now i am i am screwing it on now i'll show this i am now loading the lift the the disk part is loaded now you see this is the this is the device now you see now i am loading the device you see how it comes it comes as a reverse umbrella give me a 10 sheet actually we are supposed to have a 10 french a delivery system catheter it has fallen off and so i am i am using some other gadgets there is a sh short delivery sleeve for this no no that is ampler sir life tech has got a separate delivery sleeve it's a gray colored sleeve open that 9 french uh, new sh new system Nine French news. Ten French news system is there. Not it's on. It should be LA delivery system. Lambre delivery system. Okay. Get the get the short sleeve alone out. Quick. See, we have only five minutes. Quick. like this there is a 10 french so this is the Flush. loader flash it sister flash it flash give the screw screw now So after loading it, I am loading the device under water seal flush. Flush it nicely. Flush again. So you, it's very important to deair these devices fully. because we can easily understand what is the consequence of uh, leaving behind air in the left atrium which immediately goes to the aortic root don't push that so now i am going to make another angiogram just to confirm that go live on echo stage and check on echo also now i am going to flush this contrast out so after that we are
advancing the device so the device is coming here so just show the sheath you will be able to see the sheath within the sheath the device also So now we are going to have a picture now get more contrast so that is the position so we are our sheath is pretty deep there so i'm going to advance the device and slowly so the i have released the this part of it now i am going to make one more angiogram shrija yeah. look at the position i think on echocardiography it looks deeper, deeper. Yeah. i am going to open out the disk now so now the disk is released i am approximating it with the appendage you are seeing on the right side of the screen the continuous echo shrija is doing i'm advancing the delivery system the challenge will come in patients who are having severe renal failure where you are limited by the contrast and in those patients we rely completely on echocardiography but in a patient where you can afford to inject contrast we try to look at the angiography act as well so this is now the echo uh, in the fluoroscopic picture now all over to shrija shrija you you just yeah. explain everything yeah the position positioning looks fine it is across the landing zone safety from the circumflex I'll show the circumflex. Patient does not have blood flow in the circumflex, Dr. Krishna Murthy. Yeah, yeah. There is a, in, a venous graft that goes to the OM. But anyhow, I I respect your uh, uh, your question. I think it's very valid. Important to ensure that we are not squeezing the circumflex. I'll just get it. In this patient, I think it is fibrosed, calcified, and occluded. yeah yeah explain that explain. go into the appendage go into yeah, fully into the. so now we can we can see that there is a complete obliteration of the appendage to get the uh, the LA appendage in the center of the screen i am not by able to by it. something i am not able to get it yeah okay fine yeah then then explain here 
Yeah, I think we are seeing the screw end, we are seeing the device. Look at the color, whether any color is going into the appendage. No color flows are seen. Actually, yeah, this, this is a, a, a reasonably full occlusion. Mm. Can you show 3D? Dr. Janardhan, what do you feel? Huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I am not sure who are all sitting there. I could hear Dr. Shiva Shankar and Dr. Krishnamurti. Yeah, I am here too. This is Rajanardhan. I can hear you well. Yeah, please, please. Uh, well, how do you feel? Is the, is the position? Are you happy? Or do you want any uh, repositioning? I think it looks, it looks pretty good. I was waiting for the color and the color flow looked very good. You know, I think you had a good seal. Um, there is no um, leak around. Those are the things to watch for. You may see some color right through the middle at the beginning, but what you're really looking for are for any um, color signals around the device. You do not want to see any color signal around the device, and I do not see that. Um, and that's probably more important than the live 3D picture. The live 3D can be uh, tricky because it can look as if it's a good seal, but you want to confirm with color. Shiva, one reason we are all yeah, keeping like quiet is we are amazed yeah. at this procedure and the skill. The Whose color. voice is this? I am not able to recognize, sorry. Uh, what is the cost of the whole procedure? Uh, the cost of the whole procedure? Can you hear me? Because this is Echo India. This Because this is our Echo India, it is no, done free no, no, of no, cost by Madras Medical Mission. No, forget about Echo India, but normally what would be the cost? Around two two hundred thousand Indian rupees, two lakhs. Okay. Can you make the echo images bigger? Echo, echo bigger, yeah. Echo bigger. Yeah, there are. Doctor Amudan ensures that he sees less of fluoroscopy and more of echo. We are interested in your health also. You are getting a lot of radiation. <laughs> There's sure, sure, no sure. flow seen. Yeah. Absolutely uh, no flow seen. Yeah. Actually, you can you can see some subtle colors here and there, but those are all some sort of artifacts. Uh, really, there is no color flow through the edges of the device, as pointed out by Dr. Janardhan. So, on behalf of the, all the audience here, I appreciate Dr. Sumar, Srija, and the entire team at Madras to have done a brilliant demonstration <laughs> of using booths echo as well as fluoroscopy and then combining them together for a combined navigation for a precise intervention. Like unlike other interventions, atrial appendage closure is one, neither you can oversize nor undersize, you get an embolization because it is, it actually skews a device out if it is oversized. If it is undersized, it just jumps out. A precisely closed in LA appendage is what, going to be one of the major advances to help the patient to avoid excessive anticoagulation, anticoagulation light injury, as well as protect them from embolization. And they're excellent demonstration. Thank you, Sivokumar and the team at Madras. Thank you, Sivokumar, for having done yeah, this. This is what is Echo called India as a tap. Yeah. This Thank is called as a tap test. So, and once you are happy with the tap test, then you release the device. So now we are in the process of releasing. Just see the release and then you wind up. Because this is like the final Dibaradhana of Puja. Uh, we are supposed to see it till the end. <laughs> Released. Now we can see that it got sucked in. So this is the, this is a good, good uh, uh, you know, the, the, the end point of the procedure. Well done, Shogma. On behalf of Echo India, I thank I you thank, for it. Uh, I thank Dr. Amudan for giving us the opportunity to show uh, the intervention from Madras Medical Mission. I also thank all my colleagues, Dr. Ramya who is there with me here, Dr. Srija, the whole cath lab team by Mr. Ravi, Prabhu, Benjamin, cath lab nurses headed by Theresia, my group of beautiful, very helpful, very enthusiastic group of nurses here. Anesthetist for intubating the patient, all echo navigations is possible only with intubation. 
and our intensivists are standing just next to the patient and watching the patient's hemodynamic stability. As usual, Vipin Bhatia does a good job. Administration of Madras Medical Mission for having given this procedure free of cost for the patient. And almost every other person who has been part and parcel of this transmission. Thank you very much. Excellent job.